Welcome to CV Hustle, the podcast created to educate, inform, and inspire entrepreneurship here in our Coachella Valley. Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Mraz. And I am Fina Mraz. And this is CV Hustle, the podcast designed to inspire, educate, and inform entrepreneurship here in the Coachella Valley. And today, you know, we got a great special guest on the show today. If you're into art, uh, meditation, music, we've got you covered today because today we have the one and only Melody Cohn. Thank you for coming in and joining CV Hustle today. Thank you so much. The one and only sounds good. Uh, right? You are the one and only. You are the one and only. So art, uh, wh- wh- why don't you kind of tell our audience what you know businesses you have, what art you, you kind of got, you're into, um, kind of inform people that don't maybe don't know who you are. Well, I was born an artist. You know, I grew up in the Midwest, and then I traveled here to California in the year of 2000. And um, I was living in Yucca Valley at this time and, dr- and driving every day to Palm Springs. And every day I was like, you know, I just want to get back into art. You know, I've been raising children. And, um, of course, you know, after a divorce and dating several people, I moved to Palm Springs and then I met my future husband. You know, I, you know, it was like a a friend kind of connection. But I was talking to him about the kind of art that I wanted to do. So luckily enough, I've had a great mentor along the way. And um, so I evolved from acrylics, which I still use acrylics, and then I learned a technique which was watercolor on canvas, and that's really nice. And actually, I still use that technique for when um, anybody that wants paw art, so we can capture, I can capture, I work with your dog or cat, and I paint their little paws, and I have a little (laughs) meditation with them, and they're like looking at me like, are you reading my paws? Palm, <laughs> and, and I'm like, well, we make little art out of their little palm uh, paw prints, but this watercolor technique doesn't wash away because you seal it, and it's like on a canvas board or it can be on canvas. So that's something that I love to do. So I dabbled in that, and then over the pandemic, I uh, got kind of crazy as we all did, and we had to have a pandemic project. So I started. Uh, using glitter and glass in my bathrooms, you know, I like redid the cabinets in there. I'm like, I just get in the glass from it's broken glass that you can get at the store. It's already broken and mirrored, mirrored glass. Okay. And uh, it's tempered. And um, so I started using this technique just to, to finish off the bathroom. I started doing my own paintings for, you know, this. Mm And then it went beyond that. So, you know, my vision took me to different areas. You know, what else can you do with this? It's a, it's an experiment. I love being an artist and I love experimenting and, and claiming my, my creations, you know, as uh, individual and unique, one of a kind, like you said. I have a question. So you mentioned that you were born an artist. So tell me what that means. Did you have people in your family, because normally, like, if somebody's a singer, you know, somebody in their family is a singer or what have you, but wh- where did that stem from, do you think? It's a really great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, my father was a musician. He played the pipe organ. He was the keyboardist. And from that, I, I, I am a musician. Uh, I also play the sound bowls. But back to the subject, it, um, it kind of runs in the family like that. Um, and then my daughter, she loves to paint. My son is very creative and my granddaughter too. You know, that that kind of runs in the family that way. Sure. So, um, when I think of an organ, I think of the dong, dong, dong. Yeah. The big one in the church yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Well, he did play this one huge of pipe organ, one in Evansville, Indiana, that was one of the biggest, you know, that they put there. It's like, and it's a shame because it's a four point one million dollars to fix this organ oh. so they have to take it out of this coliseum in which they're renewing you right. know, and um because there's really not a, a need for it. people don't listen to these instruments like they used to but there is old video that was just recently I, I put on my facebook from when he played at this museum or this coliseum is what it was i right. went there for for even concerts like cheap trick i saw cheap trick at oh, this wow. coliseum and so they had this private area for this large pipe organ, and there's so many pipes. I mean, so many. 
Um, but this old footage, it, it does look kind of creepy, you know, like those old scary movies. <laughs> this newscaster, Jeff Lyons, is walking in, you know, and he's like capturing the building and then he goes in, it's kind of black and white. My dad's playing that pipe organ. Like this right. is like, wow, it's almost eerie, you know, <laughs> but just he loved that kind of thing. And I, I love art and creating and, and music. It's all so healing. It's also kind of intertwined as well, right? So it really is. Right. When so when you would when you moved down here in two thousand and you said you hit Joshua Tree why Joshua Tree what was going on there Well I was in a marriage you know we moved to um, where my mother and father in law were living up in Yucca Valley they had lived in uh, in uh, Palm Desert and then they moved up there it was more affordable and we're like wow can we do this and the kids were in school and we made an executive decision there's so much to do in california the mountains are beautiful we didn't even care if it was the middle of summer when we visited so we loved it so much that we made the big move and it was it was meant to be because our house sold like that and and they was able to come here a month before well just to start school they were here a month before we yeah came here but in this marriage went into a divorce you know it was sure. just one of those things I don't want to get into but um yeah so art is very healing Absolutely. and so many more ways that I can get into it so when I talked to you we um you had mentioned that you also do Reiki am I saying that yes correctly? you are saying it. tell me what that means because I did look it up I've heard of it I've heard several people talk about it l lately more than I have you know that I can remember and so I wasn't really sure what that meant. And so I did see a few people doing like movements like this on the internet or, or, or you, somebody even was combing hair or something and I wasn't sure what that you meant. You know, some, well, everybody was born with this gift. It's just that if you get attuned to it, if your heart is open to it and you want to be attuned, then you can be attuned by a Reiki master and you can go through these different levels. Um, but the first thing is, is that it's universal energy. And I feel that it's been around since the beginning of time, but in Japan, not really that many years ago, it was brought about. And so it's been going big ever since, just like yoga and the new age mm -hmm. thing. So uh, being attuned with it, then you have this gift that you can help and you can help yourself with it. You can help your animals. And actually when you touch your animals, you are, you're, you're giving and receiving that Reiki with them. I mean, I, I do this even before I was attuned. I kind of had that feeling with, with that. I would say it would be the closest if you hadn't been attuned to it. So it's, it's invisible, of course, but energy is invisible, sure. but it's the greatest thing of all. And um, so intentionally, you know, you, you, you pour light that you've been attuned with into areas that you feel are needed and into one's body. And, and you, you know, you start, you know, with the crown and you also want to make sure they stay grounded. And that's important. Um, so when you say stay grounded, what does that mean? Do that you means like you're sitting down. Like, are you laying down? Oh, you're laying down. Yeah, okay. the participant would definitely be laying down, and I play these singing bowls so that they can relax, relax a little bit. And uh, their their head is on a pillow, and then there's also a pillow under their legs, and I give them. Um, they they can bring their own if they want, but I have two really nice crystals that they can hold on to because when I was first being given Reiki. I had these like little, little, little jumps, Jolter. right? Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not going to be funny. Because what if I do this all, all the time, you know, like some, like a Parkinson's or something. But I eventually got out of that. It, it, it like came out. And, but I'm sensitive to one's needs. And by having um, a little, well, it's, they're not little, but they're heavy. They, they weigh down the hands a little bit. So you feel a little bit more grounded in that sense. And grounding to me also is like the root chakra. Um, this is, you know, being grounded is really important because if we not, we sometimes get like, we're all in our head thinking about this we got to do, our calendars, you know, we're multitasking. And yet we're not taking a deep cleansing breath and, and feeling that, that, that connection to the earth or even to our base, our core. It, you know, it's just important to, 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 and you can do this by hugging a tree. You can drink this, uh, you know, um, you can drink like red juices to open up your base chakra. There's many things to do for each 
chakra. But, so, and and is this part of your business? Like, or, or how did like did you have to get certified? Are you in like this? a yoga instructor? Is that what I'm? No, getting? I'm not a yoga instructor, but I learned. I took a course on how to um, facilitate meditations through a course of called chakra dance. So I want to go back to. I used to smoke cigarettes. So after I smoked. After I met my husband, I was still smoking cigarettes, and it's amazing that you know he even still wanted to date me. Um, and he says, "I believe if you quit, you will have achieved the greatest thing." It's a hard thing, guys. Oh, you a, don't don't ever start drug. anybody. Please, it's horrible, worst, right? Yes. And so, uh, with his guidance, I I actually quit that habit. But when I got off of work, before I would even see him, I started instead of going out to the patio to light up and pollute the garden, um, I was teaching myself how to meditate and then it was like a couple of years after that then the chakras came about and they were you know needing facilitators all throughout the world and I'm like wow you can you can meditate you can you know activate these energy centers and you can move you know releasing toxins that's stored in your body so anything we do as far as removing energy that's unwanted in our bodies. There's many ways to do it. Yoga is another moving meditation and it's a wonderful way. But we and need massage, to, right? Like and massage, massage therapy, is really good. That kind of thing Any too. kind of meditation, Reiki is a one-on-one, -on -one, which it's really great. But you know, meditations are really, really wonderful too because like last night I had a, a drum circle and a solar plexus um, meditation because it's, it's, this is the divine masculine. And so we had this drum circle and when you get together, like in this, the energy is really profound. Mm -hmm. It's like when two or more gather, right? The energy is just more magnificent. And it's like that energy rises. And I like holding these spaces because I feel that it, it's in the uh, collective and that it's going to, to Mother Earth and helping her heal, you know, by bringing some light to the surface. So w when you hold these, what does that look like? Is it is it an hour deal? Like, what is? Do you charge for that? How does that work in, in a business? Yeah, it's it's donation based, you know, on different modalities, and um, so yeah, there's there's different modalities. Like the meditation could be like ninety minutes long, and um, a reiki uh, would be like an hour long, mm -hmm. and it includes singing bowls and sometimes tuning forks and essential oils because. Essential oils uh, re revive us, awaken us, you know, and so they're also related to these chakra centers. So when one is like, you know, receiving, they're, they're like drifting off, and oftentimes people fall asleep, but they're still receiving this Reiki universal energy. That's what they call it. So it's universal energy. So it's energy coming from the universe. I'm just a conduit, you know, to this. Um, so it's, uh, it's really special. And uh, the sound bathing. So before the pandemic, my husband got me these sound bowls. And, you know, I had a lot of time to play them. And then in the year of 2022, we're coming out of that phase, right out of the pandemic. What are the sound bowls made out of? Is it is it glass? Or is it, they could be made out of different things, Compressed correct? crystal, actually. Oh. Compressed crystal. Yeah, they sell them. Then they, I saw they have like a store in Vegas that sold a bunch of those. And they had them in Cabo when we went. Yeah, they're just they, they, they coming very, them. very famous. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty in the popular. The last few these years, days, right? yes, they are. And then there's different things that you go around the the bowl with, correct? And what what would that be? Um, well, there's different. There's like a mallet, and then there's one that's like a little stiffer without a padded. You know, so you can get different sounds from them. Also, Tibetan bowls, which have been around since the beginning of time, you've seen them, and they're like the precious metal bowls. That, like, when people go to Tibet, you know, the Tibetan bowls, they're like, like brass bowls. So they have okay. a sound to them as well. And other musical instruments that kind of, um, you know, what ASMR is, like when you, AS, the sound that's pleasing to one's ear when they hear something. Mm -hmm. Um, these instruments are really good to put into a sound bath. And what I was going to say in, in 2022, coming out of the pandemic, I had my girlfriends come over and experience something that I had my uh, husband help me with because I had a vision. You know, we get visions. And I said, well, I would like to 
have them come over and experience floating on the water while I'm doing a sound bath, while I'm playing these bowls. And this has become very, very popular. You know, what someone, that, what it's, that it's like floating on water. Well, if you can imagine, if you've never really done a sound bath, this is like when you lay on a yoga mat and you've got your head propped on a pillow and you want to use these healing tones because they are healing frequencies to different parts of our energetic field. Okay. Uh, you just relax and you receive as long as you're open to it. And that goes for all energy work, got it. you know, as long as you're open to it. And um, so you let these singing bowls and these frequencies just travel through you, right? And then it's something like you might even get goosebumps because they're so good. Well, incorporating one floating on the water while I'm doing this, they're traveling around. So as you can imagine, our, our, our head is like round. So we receive, and that's a, it's a miracle by God that we have it like this because we hear better with our, the way that... Our crowns are, um, you can only imagine when you're turning around that it's like the sound is different, you know, turning around on a float because you're not, you're mobile, you're floating around and you're not just, you know, staying grounded. And the grounded space is wonderful too. And you cannot go wrong, you know, either way. But this was like um, the ultimate. This is like the immersive experience. So, um, yeah. And so I have those. Um, another thing I do with, with one of my friends, a dear friend of mine, her name is Debbie Marlowe, and she is also in, into Reiki and, and Carol Johnson. Yes. So we get together and we have these Reiki circles, and so we help one another. You know, it's like just to, to keep each other up because it really does lift our vibration, and we just feel, we feel so much better. You know, it's like we've let go of any stress yeah you gotta get let that go and release right yes um i have a question regarding you were saying the music part of it you wanted to know about um yeah because so on your website it says you also use music to heal you want to kind of elaborate on is it is it it is with the sound the the sound sound healing yes so you you switch from what you did before to the well, I used to play the trumpet yeah. in high school, so okay. I don't think that would be. <laughs> yeah. That would be That's very cool. silly. Well, Maybe. Be, like, bum, 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 if you're Miles Davis, it could everybody. be very silly, right? <laughs> My husband's a huge music fan. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I, I love all genres. I yeah. love music and you know I guess with my father being a musician that's one of the reasons why he and my mother named me Melody yeah so I I embrace that I I love it about myself I didn't always when I was younger you know I don't think any of us really like her name we want to be someone else's name (laughs) but the older I get I'm like wow thank you thank you it's a blessing now right so I wanted to ask you um you know the stereotype of the starving artist you know this is a podcast about entrepreneurship and business at the heart of it you're you're a business person that makes a living through art you know so that that stereotype of a starving artist what is that true is that overblown what is your opinion on on that that stereotype that like for me like when I hear artists I'm like well you know they must be struggling to make it or they're gonna sell out you know to make it you know that that kind of that kind of thing what's your what's your take on all that well I would hate to be a starving artist. Um, you know, if we didn't have other businesses too, um, my husband and I, you know, it would not be enough to float what it is that we have. Right. So we're lucky enough that you know he's in agriculture and well, he's an artist too, and an architect. You know, so we're lucky and fortunate about that. If it if I was to live on art alone, I probably not live maybe you know, we would I, be I, starving I, I, I would be starving yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not so it's not uh just a stereotype then no it, it's much like a musician too I mean musicians don't get paid very well you know like these gigs that they have they're like sure. and and it, it's it, it's really sad I I I think that they deserve so much more because these are important things in our life you know oh, it, it's really and, oh. and it's, it seems like they've even taken that out of school like right you know. Music isn't that they they, they do still have like the marching bands. That's true. I I mentor yeah. um, at Coachella Valley High School oh, as a, my alma mater. Yeah. Yeah. So it's through the JFK Foundation. I'm an Ophelia girl mentor. Very so oh, women awesome. through the valley. It's a whole nother subject. But we heard the marching band the other day. I'm like, wow. We all woke up. I'm like, 
I love that power, yeah. you know, the drums and the I marching the drums. band. Nothing, there's nothing quite like it, right? And speaking of the drums, last night's drum circle was really powerful. You know, it's like every, well, those that had drums, they brought them. And and um, so this is, this is something that's really powerful. It just lifts up the vibration. You know, you can be like this, and then afterwards you're like, Wow, it's almost like you captured a heartbeat through the, the vibration. Oh, yeah. I mean, music does that for us, yeah. whether it's drums or other. And I wanted to speak of music on another level, which most don't think about, and it's kind of going to be integral in this interview, is our chakras resonate. Hold with, on, what is a chakra? Okay, that's I an don't invisible. Know what that means. What? Right. Yeah, no, that's I've a, heard of right? these, but like I need yeah, somebody we, to I think we've all heard the term, but people I that don't, don't practice yeah. might not necessarily know exactly. You're you're what absolutely it is. right. So, we were born with energy centers that are invisible. Where you can look at the body, the physical body, and you can just think of the spine, you know, going up the spine. So, at the tailbone, this would be your connection to the base chakra. So that is also the color of red, all right? And this is the wonderful thing. Well, like you look at a red flower or drink something that's red or eat red foods, right? Just any seeing this in a tree and just connecting with that red color. So the next one up is the, the water element. So we've got the earth and now we're into the water element, which is our sacral chakra, like our lower belly. Like this is where, you know, probably belly dancing came about and the, the flow of that yeah. is very like wavy and like ocean waves, right? Like yeah. this. And it's the element of water and it's the, the, the key of D. So we've got the key of C and the key of D. This so gives a whole new resonance to music and, and music scale. And so the next one up is our divine masculine, which is our fire element. And this fire element is our masculine. This is where we need to make decisions. This is when we need that strength and endurance and that passion. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is where we to hear the fire in the belly. Fire That's where that comes from. Yes, from, right? yeah, absolutely. That, that and from. oftentimes we'll see ourselves hunched over like this. Well, you know, we're not, we're not. We want to expose that solar plexus up to the sun because it is the sun element. So the next one up, well, that would be CDE. So that one would be in the key of E. And the heart chakra is the next one up that uh, is in the heart center and the thymus, and it is the color of green, and it, it would be in the key of F, CD, right? C-D-E-F, yes. Okay. And uh, that's, that's a big one for people because, sure. like, you know, we get hurt in the heart and we just, I mean, we don't get over it. Some people just live with hurtness for the rest of their life and it's really sad because you can clear that area and when you do you can you you're like wow what i was holding against you or what i could not forgive you for, I, i'm over it i'm i'm over it because i have nothing but love to share this is what a healing of the heart can do so uh the next one up uh, would be the throat chakra and that is the sky blue color and this is so important, guys. You know, what we speak comes about. It's like light attracts light. So the more that we can speak positive and, and not get caught up in, you know, the, the gossip, and because that's, that's never going to come from anything good, good you know. So it, it's, it takes practice, you know, and, I, and it, it's also in the mind, too. But it's, it's about what we listen to and about what we speak. And also about manifesting what it is that we want in life it's it's a very very powerful chakra so the next one up from that is our, our third eye and this is our vision and this is where intuitively you might just all of a sudden think wow that will go with that and this will go with and, and i've got to get in touch with her and sometimes you know things happen in 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 it, you can't explain it. Yeah. You're so, just kind of at the right place at the right time sometimes, and you're like, whoa, how did that come about? Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, that is uh, the color indigo, like of the night sky. And what would that be? C D E F G A. And then the next one after that would be the crown chakra. And this is our connection to, to, the other side of the universe. This is where we are connected. You know, we all are connected. Sure. And um, it, it, this is where, you know, angels will come to us and, you know, ancestors. And I like to make it, when I think about it, I like for them all to be like uh, of light, you know, sure. because I don't like to bring things of darkness about. I always emphasize of light because 
our words are powerful, you know, and yeah, the more I, we elaborate. I have a question. So I, cause I've been looking at your art here and I did also look at it online and I see it always a, a kind of a, a pattern, right? And the pattern is you have this line going through and then you have like, um, I don't even know what you would call that. What would you call that? You know, where you've got it going up like um, smoke or it's, um, you know, something. And then it's also going down. So is that like the two different worlds you're thinking about there? Like that's what, what I went to. Sometimes it okay. is. And I think the one that you're, you're talking about is this one. This one is called the Violet Flame. Mm -hmm. And I have a large one of this. And then I made this as one of the little mini-me's. And the Violet Flame, so if something is bothering you, and you just can't quite shake it, have a meditation with that violet flame because it will transmute these energies and it will, it will cleanse these energies. So I'm, I'm very big on it. It's, it's just like that violet, it's kind of like getting right in here into this frame of mind. So if you see it, it's gonna happen, but getting into that moment and you need, you need a meditation to get into this moment. So many of my paintings, I, it, it was coming out of a meditation and a vision. So, okay. yes. So you meditate and that's your process. You meditate and then you create that, that kind of the process. Yes. You know, it, I can't actually create something like this, you know, all after I, it, 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 it days, it takes days, but the, the vision, the vision, comes. The vision. Ah, yeah, the awesome, visions. Awesome. Well, you had mentioned that you uh, mentor um, young art students in Coachella Valley High School. Mm. And, you know, in today's society, I think, you know, you guys have already discussed this, art is kind of being devalued in our public school system to an extent. And I, in my personal opinion, that's nonsense because, you know, we all need art. Art's, I think, what separates us from the AI chatbots of the world because it's a, it's a soulful expression of, like, your inner being, right? Is that, that's kind of, I mean, I'm not an artist, but I would assume that you, when you have these visions, that's really what it is. It's your expression of your human experience, right? It's so, everything. So what would you, what do you tell, you know, what's your advice to kids that, you know, outside of CBI school that maybe think of thinking about going into art as a career or see themselves as an artist or want to go in an art field? What advice would you have for somebody, you know, that's younger that maybe, hey, I see, you know, they make great work, but how do I make, you know, how do I make this work for myself? You know, what would your advice That's be? a really good question. Um, because I would emphasize, you know, definitely express yourself, express yourself. Um, and there are definite uh, credentials you can go to for school. I wouldn't, I would say if this is your biggest passion in life, go for it. Um, but it is difficult. Okay. So it's something that like for me, it was something on the side and it, and it will always be on this side. Mm -hmm. And I think when kids are going into college, you know, they, they're going for something and they have a vision and then they get, they dabble in something else. Yeah. Right. And then they find this. And so I think it's all about, um, creating yourself and creating your life. Um, I wanted to say that the girls that I mentor, they're not just art all art students there um the counselors actually pick girls that are are like at risk you know yeah. and so with a mentor this can make all the difference in the world and and the, the foundation gives them scholarships you know based on on um their credit uh, not credit scores but their their scores in school and attendance and things and i've been a very big part of this art project because my husband founded the art project for this years and years ago so i've been a part of it this last year a friend of mine jana ballman she came up with the idea but i've been like her little assistant with this and uh the ophelia theme is always butterflies because these girls are in school and, and they're like in their cocoon state sure. but when they graduate they're spreading their wings and they're flying so it's really a really beautiful project if you've never heard of it be a great podcast i uh so i know a couple of the of the counselors over at cv high so i went to school with a couple of them so okay. maybe i should be reaching out to them about that that's so great oh it's it's a really it's beautiful needed. thing it is needed. Um, these girls, you know, they went, well, we, I've been mentoring for years. Um, and when it was pandemic time, I wasn't really good on Zoom and all of that. And I, I was going through difficulty myself. So 
um, I got back into it a couple of years ago afterwards, but they, they had difficulties. All students that were in school, whether during this time, whether they were studying at home, whether they were, you know, on Zoom, they learned a lot. They really learned a lot, but there's, there's a lot of um, insecurity after that happened, right? Yeah. So a, scare, a little bit of uh, scarcity with all of it. Um, one beautiful thing that I love is that the Ophelia Project uh, we, they give us a manual of everything, like a, how we're going to do the whole day and, and lessons for the whole year. But we open it up with a breathing meditation. Oh, so this great. was brought about last year, even though it was kind of like doing it before. But this is now in the manuscript to do a deep breathing exercise with the girls. And it really helps. You know, they're coming in from stressful you know, environments, you know, studying and all that. And they really do say that it helps. So like... I try to get a girl also to help, you know, and give her the authority to do so, Absolutely. so she can step up to the plate. Um, so I, when I was on your, I think you had sent me your Instagram, um, and I did see you guys walking around, and what, what is that called? Because you've also mentioned the word solar plex. I don't know what that means, so can you explain that to me? Yes, yes. So you're talking about like last night you saw us walking. Well, no, on th that was. A, I guess I'm going off on two different things. So the one I did see that, and I, that when you're walking around, it reminded me of. And I don't. It was time, Bobby. I don't know if you went to the Desert X projects. There was one big basket weave that was, but and I thought yes. that was so cool, and it kind of reminded me of that pattern. And so I just, you know, like, how do you come up with that? And is that in your backyard or is that, was that somewhere that people go to, to, to walk around? You're talking about the labyrinth? Sure. Okay. <laughs> the labyrinth. I know, I'm talking about too many things. <laughs> no, the labyrinth is, is something we haven't yet talked about. My husband's favorite meditation is the labyrinth walk. And these labyrinth walks have been around since mid-century times so often tom started in churches oh so it's a meditation it is a walking meditation oh. it's not a maze walk and meditate at the same time yes yes you can i'd probably trip and fall so, well no <laughs> it's not a maze you just you just follow the way and but it seems like you're getting closer to the center right when actually then it draws you back out farther away from the center so it, it can take, you know, up to like, if you, you want to take a little time in the middle of it. So um, you you walk in and you kind of like de-shed things that are on your mind and bothering you. You know, you follow the path, but you also are setting intentions. And then when you get to the center of it, you know, you're, you're dealing with all of those things. And then you just like, okay, here we are, the universe and me. And, and we just, we can let this go. And then we go walk out the same way came, we came in. And we, we release it all that way. So my husband loves to facilitate this because it's his favorite meditation. And um, he actually built that labyrinth, you know. Wow. He had a little help, but he designed it and he built it. And so having, having group uh, walks is really special because you end up making room for others and things come to you. And, um, but even an individual, you know, private walk you can gain a lot from it as well so when you say like so i'm assuming you have so you let people know hey we're going to have a, a lab how do you say that yeah it, i'll make an event event okay so you'll make an event and then people will come is there like a max you know we're going to stop at 10 people yeah like i usually like to stop at around 15 people oh okay. yeah yeah it's not it you know so and is it normally at night time no no i have things in the daytime too okay Matter of fact, we've got a, a, a divine flow retreat coming up on April the 6th, and this is all going to be about tapping into the divine feminine. And so we're going to have like photo shoots and we're going to have meditations, ecstatic dance, chakra dance, uh, sound bathing on water and grounded space, labyrinth. And we're going to do photo sessions of, you know, it's mostly going to be women, uh, but uh, uh, we've got props where we're going to set them up and take pictures and let them dress up, you know, as goddesses and just have fun being a woman and tapping into that divine it. feminine, right? Yeah, yeah it's, an, it's important because we're so, we sparkle when we're like that, when we tap into that divine feminine. I wanted to say everyone, everyone has divine feminine and masculine within them. We often think, okay, well, that's a man. He's only masculine. That's a woman. She's only feminine. It's not true. 
you know, um, balancing these energies within us make us, uh, uh, well, we feel better about ourselves. You know, we don't, we're not overpowered by one or the other. Sure. But uh, you should come to one of yeah, one of my meditations. Cool. Open your mind. So my open your mind my up. friend Adriana and I are going to be doing this uh, divine flow, and we're really active on Instagram and putting this out there. So like for um, a hundred and fifty five dollar donation, you know, you're going to have a little lunch and vegetables and organic tea that we have from the garden. And because um, we got oranges and lemons and nice. mint and, and all of this. And um, we live, this place is next to Point Happy Mountain. So it's a very, oh, very, very beautiful. spiritual Those place. Mountains, that mountain view. Anything with mountains is going to be spectacular. And then we have a beautiful right garden too that my husband has, you know, planted like every fruit tree and every plant. And the skin, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I've actually, I, I made a lot of, um, a lot of manifestation has happened just from being there and meditating, you know, cause it's like, it's like you feel aligned and then, and the universe is right, right. So let's do this. Let's right. do it. I, I was thinking, so my sage burning is like so low key compared. Yeah. That's, that's like minor leagues. That's like, like baby, that's baby stuff. But you know, it's not, it's very, it's, it's proven. It's proven that the staging, you know, definitely works on, on energies. It's like, this is one thing I am very, very passionate about is cleansing our energy field, whether whatever it is. And that sage will definitely do it. And, you know, some people are like, you know, what, what's this? It's like, it, it does do it. You know, you don't even need to like go heavy on it, right? But it, it definitely works. And Palo Santo is really good. And, you know, you can always use some incense. And um, Bobby loves incense. Yeah, that's yeah. my thing. What's she your favorite one? I don't know. I just buy them at the record shop. <laughs> and whatever Dale has in supply, I pick up. But I wanted to ask you, so you can't really talk art in the Coachella Valley without mentioning the Desert X projects. That, that no, these are on, on a whole nother level. Yeah, these but, are... but I will kind of, since you know, you're a fellow artist, I kind of wanted to get your spin on that whole thing. I mean, cause we have, you know, people from all over the country, all over the world coming for these, oh. these art pieces now in the middle of our desert. And it's just like, you know, Coachella's festivals for music and music lovers come out to that. Well, art lovers come to Desert X and it's really kind of put our Coachella Valley art scene on the map, I believe. Absolutely. And, and so, what you know, have you, what's your opinion on it? I mean, there's some artists that say, you know, it's a little too big and takes away from, you know, it's a little too commercial. What What is your What is your take on all that? I, I like to look at it as a very positive thing. You know, this is meant for others to be inspired. There's different, you know, just all different ideas and what they come up with. It's it's amazing. And as long as there's a solid place for this and, it, and it's in that perfect place, I think it's ideal. Unfortunately, we live in an area where it's like the Marilyn Monroe place, you know, right. it will never be settled there. You know, she was there, she left, she's right. back, and now they're not settled on that. Well, it's the same, you know, with this. You're always going to have people that are, you know, half glass, half full. Right. Uh, and as long as it's not, you know, right in my front yard, I mean, and you know what I'm saying, sure. but, but they, they're very crafty in where they do put these expos. And um, I, I definitely support that. And, you know, over at, at, at the Coachella Fest, you know, all of this, it's the whole world can, can see this. It does put us on the map. I mean, maybe in another 10 years, I don't know, it might be overgrown. I do know there's a place over there by, what is it, um, on the Salton Sea, there's a place. Um, is it Ruben's uh, Ranch? Ruben's Ranch. Ruben's no. Ranch. No, there's a there. I know what you're talking about. The little Badlands portion out there. That has yes, all the there's art. like a, a, a gallery. I think Anthony place. Bourdain went out there for a shoot back for yeah. back in the day. Oh yeah, there, there's like a it's a bunch of graffiti and art and it's just kind of a pop up. So right. Some there's the, the that one I, I'm having a brain fart here. I cannot remember. Uh, Salvation Mountain. That's uh, what it is. Salvation okay. Mountain. Okay. It's it's an inspiring place to go. You know to the to the Salton Sea. And I know. I but if you I've go go in the either. daytime and allow yourself some time to go, there's they have a like a gallery that's close to it, uh -huh. and it's like outdoor sculptures that have been you know like donated in this area where you know they no longer are needed anywhere else, and so they have these big sculptures and and stuff like that that are out there in the desert, getting wind blown and everything. But it it's 
it's art out there nevertheless, and it's something anyone can go see. So I want to talk a little bit about, about the Desert X because um, one of my friends, Roger, he's like the, is he mayor by now? He's for a, 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 of DHS. And there was, I went to a big party that they had, and I don't know why, but my mind was blown when um, there was all these construction crews making what the artist wanted to to, you know, to put up for art. In my mind, I was thinking they were doing all the work. Right. Because, you know, like, that's just how I, I just pictured it. And then, and they were like, no, Fina, of course, if they have a, you know, 20 foot totem pole, it has to withstand the wind. It's got to withstand, it's got to withstand all of these, you know, elements. And I'm like, I, I was just like, the light went off. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. So, you know, not only are you creating something that you're, you know, you've got a vision that you're putting on paper, then all of a sudden you're, you're trying to translate that to somebody that's going into the construction field and making Absolutely. what you want and making it the way you want, you know? So it, that was pretty interesting to it me. Is. It just didn't even dawn on so me. So it's like an architect coming up with a plan. Yeah. Right. And you mentioned your husband's an architect. Yes. Very he, cool. he builds structures for, um, like, um, greenhouses, you know, or oh. st uh, shade structures for crops of uh, fields. Oh, wow. Yes. Very interesting. He's a very interesting guy. <laughs> very. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice if the Desert X Project had some local artists. I've noticed that most of them are from all over the world, and I don't know that. It'd be nice to use one of us local artists, right? So There are, there are uh, sculpturists, you know, in the area. And um, you can on see. Alpha sale, right? Aren't there some on Alpha Yeah, sale? no, they, they, they're some really nice sculptures yeah. over there. Yeah, right there on, on El Paseo. But now, not all of them, I don't think, are local, local. But they're yeah. not like from, you know, the East Coast or anything yeah. that I know of. I think they do use some local, though. Should Didn't I like you mention point? her being in the La Quinta Arts? Oh, yeah. So on your website, we. Um, kind of did some our little investigation on here <laughs> saw that you had gotten uh, featured on in the quinta museum is that that's correct right one of your pieces was in yes there. actually this piece back here Ooh, yeah. tell us all about it's it such a great we're so blessed to have a museum you know that that they just always have the best exhibits and they you know they are always you know asking um, locals if they want to participate so during the pandemic we even for years now we've been able to be a part of their exhibits and uh, this one just happened to be one that just expired uh, in January but this is the piece that I created for that it's called desert views yeah, beautiful oh, thank you. if you can't see it on uh, the podcast check it out on YouTube it'll be up but it's a, these are some beautiful pieces Thank you. So it, the story is like these Karens, um, you know, if you go to the La Quinta Cove up there, they have these and you walk, walk up there on this hill and they're there. And um, in many places, even like um, Yellowstone, they um, have them tear them down, you know, so artists, people, you know, balance them. It's the rock balancing thing. And so uh, Third, some of the state parks are asking them to tear them down. Like if you see one, to actually push it back down because Aww. little critters and stuff are used to little rocks that are there. And then so we people come around and then we start stacking them. But um, people still do it. And it's it's a meditation in itself. And, uh, right, so, trying to balance. Rocks. Well, I, and I, I look at it as like, like it's almost like, people you know watching over the valley like this is the mountains back there in the cove and this is oh, like yeah. the oh, yeah. and so it's almost like a, a little family that watches over you know that cove over day and night very so cool, how, how did cool. how did that come about like do they do you apply or how does how does that happen oh well you get on their email and then when they have an exhibit ah. they're like you know you have this time uh, before deadline to apply for this exhibit and oftentimes they'll even give you some of the materials you know like a canvas really so they even you know like if we wanted to use our own we could but you know they like this particular one they're like here if you want a uh, canvas you can come by the museum so do they, they are great over there they want work wonderfully together all do they them. say hey it needs to be this big by this big or you have this amount of space and yes. you can fill it in or yes usually okay. they do have standard sizes that they want so that it looks See, yeah, more it symmetrical. Looks, yeah. And then is, does, is that, how long does it stay up? 
Well, it's generally through a season. Like this was oh. up from October through January. Oh, good. So it was, they, they have their exhibits up for a season, which is really nice. So locals and visitors can go over there, just walk on in, and they're really, really great. Really great. And then do they give you a night where you can be there to answer questions and things like that with, with people? Yeah, they have a, like an artist exhibit, ah. you know, so that you can meet the artist and... And artists meet other artists, and sure. you make new friends, and, uh, right. you know. You and know. then at the end of that, is that something that's, like, commissioned? They, they can purchase those pieces, or you just, you know? They, we don't list them for sale when they're on exhibit there, no. Okay. No, that's, that would be more like um, a gallery kind of thing. Kind of but thing. these are displayed. But certainly, you know, if, if you're there and you have an art, uh, interest in, in a piece, you know, you would write that artist down and then after the exhibit or he, maybe even at this point you could reach out to say hey you know what call me baby call yeah me. i like this it's calling me <laughs> right so this piece is for sale yes awesome so, right, so once again if you're on youtube you can see the piece and if you have some interest in maybe uh picking up a few pieces you know reach out to us and we'll give you the contact information thank you yes yeah, so. tell me about the um one you have in your hand now yeah that one's cool too this yeah. one is if i was to paint like um like reiki this would be like receiving that universal energy and the palms of my hands this is where you know you would work and when we do reiki we don't always have to touch the the participant you can receive it without but sometimes a gentle touch is really nice but this is about receiving that universal energy because it just gotcha. imagine receiving the brightest light and and love you know that that you want to be a conduit of to help others sure you know really love stress it. sickness um anything that and you know, hurt and it, it, whatever is energy you know the reiki energy knows if even if you're not in that area it travels to where it's most needed mm -hmm. which is really beautiful but generally you know you kind of feel it and you'd like give it that extra energy needed mm, very interesting so i'm assuming this one came out of a meditation mm -hmm. yeah. yes like I, would, I would i would assume just looking at it that that was a pretty powerful piece that yeah, you thank you saw visions of and kind of made it come cool. to life it's very cool very, very cool. cool well i you know, the work that I do in the healing arts, uh, it, it makes me a light worker. Have you heard of light working? So it's like all of this energy work is basically like um, building light, sharing light, making a place to add more light, you know, through meditations, through Reiki, through sound meditation. It's all about um, bringing more light to the surface for, for others, for yourself and your family and all those that are around you. And so... I like to think that, you know, adding a little light to the canvas, you know, and, and when it's on the wall and, and you're walking by it, it might even be in a dark room I know, yeah. and it's like sparkling at you, right? So that's like light. And like in, the, in any room, if you have a candle that's lit next oh, to it, it's gosh. like sparkling. The ceiling fan will even uh, allow movement in this. So I... I love it for the fact that, you know, I'm incorporating that light working into my art. Absolutely. That's great. Okay. I have a question because now, now I'm going back to, you had mentioned a solar plex. What does that mean? Because it, you know, I think, I think solar, I think the stuff that's on my roof, but that doesn't mean that I'm sure I don't think in your world, same. what does that mean? Well, the solar plexus is our um, element to the fire to the fire element and this is our our masculine the, side so the fire uh, is the belly okay yeah okay so the sacral the feminine is right below so think of yourself as a a rainbow you know so we do have an inner rainbow it's really beautiful guys we are we are we are instruments of god and we are more than we are so much more than we ever thought we were and attuning these things, you know, whew, I'm getting the goosies because it's so powerful. Uh, you attune yourself, and you're like a fine-tuned instrument, mm -hmm. like a guitar when you tune an instrument or you tune a piano. It's so much, and it, it's harmony. Oh, it's, it's working in harmony with all of the other notes. And so the solar plexus, you know, it, it um, what, what I like to think of is like the Beatles, like here comes the sun. Mm -hmm. When I first got these bowls, I'm experimenting with them, and my husband is a, 
He's probably the biggest Beatle fan of all. And so, like, I'm having fun, and I'm, like, I'm singing, you know, Here Comes the Sun with this one, which is a CDE. And I'm playing, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. George Harrison creating Here Comes the Sun in the key of E. Ah. I'm like, wow, this just came to me. So it's like I, I don't take it, gra- take it for granted that, it, that it's, it's real, this music and uh, these colors, these images, and these energies, even though they're invisible, um, you know, they're very real. Matter of fact, in a lot of my meditations, we will put like an eye mask on, okay? It's like a scarf and you put it on or any kind of mask. But when you're hearing these mu- the music to my meditations and yet listening to the voice, the guided meditation, you will get brighter visions. You will see things. This is when your third eye will really awaken and you'll, things will become um, a little bit more clairvoyant. You, know, you will see things and, and you will uh, immerse yourself into the colors, into the images, and you will, you will see things. And then before the end of the meditation, we often do, if it's, a certain meditation will do a mandala art exercise so i like to give everybody the time it's it's time to, to i give them a black sheet of uh, cardstock and there's a big white circle in the center of it and i give them pastels and they can create their own art things that they saw in their mind's eye during the meditation and excuse me you start by placing one palm into this mandala and then you set your intention and then you just release and then you just let go and it's it's not a competition right it's just like all means and then you take this home with you and then you'll reflect and you'll kind of just come back to the the sacred space that we were were in i i learning how to hold space for others um i've had some lessons in this uh, but it's something I take great pride in. It's like I think the people need, especially after the pandemic, people need more healing than what they think they do. And I just want to help others that are open to that because I know the world would meet just a much yeah. better awesome. place, right? Awesome. Well, we're running up against time here, but we always like to ask our guests like the last couple questions. What is so you're you know you're a featured artist. You've been around. You've kind of seen the game. What would you? What advice would you give to maybe an, some an artist or maybe an art student that's thinking about getting into this game as a as a as a living, trying to get into it as a business? What, what words of advice would you have for them, you know, as a youngster coming up that you wish you knew when you were younger? To follow your dream, follow your dream, you know, and um, also plan on having a job you know, as you're going to yeah. school because you're going to need to support yourself. But you can pursue your dream. I would never tell anyone not to, to not even bother because that would be anti what I'm all about. Sure. Um, you know, as long as we're exercising gifts that we were born with, gifts that God has given us, um, we're, we're using our talents and we're doing the best that we can, guys, all of us, right? So for that person, if it's something that they really wanted to do, do it, you know, do, do follow the courses, take the courses that, you know, you're most interested, but also keep a little bit of mind uh, for business, you know, keep yourself grounded because you need to make a living. And maybe one day, you know, you're going to, you, if you manifest with mindfulness, if you use these energies, you can manifest being the best artist in the world. It's just, it's gonna take a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. You can do it though, anything is possible. If I really wanted to, I think that I, I could even do it. I haven't, it's just, I haven't used all that energy. Quite honestly, I, I don't know if my ego could take it if I became a, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, I a famous. Around that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So where can our audience find you and your work? You know, because I sure as heck learned a lot and saw your art for the first time today and it's it's beautiful so i recommend our audience check it out where where can they find you where where can they you know link up with you and and really if they want to talk to you about some art where where yes well you can find me on instagram under healing arts with a melody and you can find me on facebook also under healing arts with a melody um you can find me on facebook under melody cone and you can also find me on facebook under artist with a melody um, we are located in La Quinta at this little place called Images Fine Art Gallery and Garden. Awesome. And uh, 
so we do classes there and all of this and um yeah this is where i do everything you know i'm also available for mobile services so i can you know go on as as mobile and um yeah. one thing i didn't talk about i'd like to real quickly is the reiki that the my friend um, debbie marlowe and i we are doing tandem reiki for couples there are couples out there that need a little extra loving energy in their auroric field. And so what we do is called Couples Tandem Reiki. So we put two massage tables together, we decorate it all with beautiful flower um, flowers and flower petals and essential oils and sound bowls. And we bring universal energy to the couple. So they lay side by side, they hold hands, wow. And we, you know, we go around and we give them this universal energy and it helps them out as a couple, you know, for their marriage, for their parenting, for, for anything. It's, it's really a beautiful thing. And I think it's like for 225, you can have that done. Now, it's is really it special. close on or close off? <laughs> it's definitely close, close on. on. Close on, close okay. On. <laughs> and up, then, Fina, we might need to go. Because uh, very loving. Uh, no, but just, you know, if we need a little extra boost. That's true. Well, and thank you for coming in, to, coming in today. My I've pleasure. learned so much yeah. about, about all the yeah. great art and the work you've done over the years, and we wish you nothing but luck, and thanks for Thank you for inspiring the community, you know, with your podcast. We're you trying. Know? So we you're sharing so. your light, too. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying the best we can. So. That's that's all that we can do, right? That's, that's right. it. That's Thank it. you so much. Thank, Thank you for coming. You're so sweet.